Hello, welcome to New Harvest Christian Fellowship, Manchester, England, and thank you for subscribing to our sermon podcast. The message you're about to hear was recorded live at one of our recent services. We pray it will be a blessing to your life, and if you'd like to get in touch with us, we'll give you our contact information at the end of the recording. Thank you once again. Enjoy the preaching. The calendar says it's a ministry meeting on Friday. Is that right, Pastor Tom? Okay, so it isn't prayer on Friday, it's ministry meeting. Amen, but I'll take the flag for that. Amen. (laughs) Part two of our series tonight, amen. We had an immense introduction to this, and uh, it already set the scene, as Pastor Tom said. It's springtime, it's time for growth, it's time for change. Amen. This is the season, amen. Seasons are opportunities. They don't just impose themselves upon you. They bring change that you can seize and you can begin to live a new mode of life as the seasons come. And spring, this season now, the reason we're doing this series, the reason that God is speaking to us along these lines is that the Lord is telling us that we have opportunity right now in our lives, in our church, in our ministries, in our families, in our marriages, in our relationships. We can see growth. We can see change. Amen? But we have to seize the opportunity that God is giving us and recognize the things that the season brings to us. Amen. So we're going to move right along tonight and we're going to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6. Very simple passage of scripture there. Real, real simple and basic. I didn't memorize it tonight because I'm always afraid of having a senior moment when I'm preaching and forgetting what I'm about to talk about. So I have it written down. And it's dead simple. It just says this. It says, I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. Amen. Let's pray this evening. Lord, we thank you for your presence tonight. We thank you, Father God, for this season of opportunity and growth that you've brought into our lives and our ministries. And we pray, Lord God, that by your spirit tonight, God, through your word, you would speak life to our hearts. You would bring direction to our souls, God. You'd encourage us and inspire us, Father God, to to, to reach out for the things that you have for us, Lord, individually and together. We ask tonight, God, that your presence would fill this place. I pray that you'd use me, Father God. Help me, Father God, to minister your word, Father God, and all that you desire to communicate tonight. And I pray you'd receive all of the glory, honor, and praise this evening in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. It's springtime. Amen. How many know it's springtime? Just in case you were wondering, I've worn my spring shirt tonight. Praise God. I was telling Brother Danny earlier, even if I don't say anything worthy of note tonight, you'll all remember the shirt. Praise God. Hallelujah. We look around in springtime and there's growth all around us. I don't know if you've noticed, but just down the street from church, there's a blossom tree that's out now. It's beautiful. It's pink. Where there were bare branches before, now there's a whole host of flowers on that thing. You look in the hedgerows, things are beginning to bust into, into growth. There's little bits of green where there was just once dead twigs. There's flowers and fruits that are going to be coming. And we feel optimistic because of all the growth we see beginning to take place. But do you know there's a reason why that growth is now beginning to take place? Why the season that's come upon us, the growth is there to take opportunity of that. And there's a reason why that is the case. And you know what the reason is? Back in the autumn, somebody sowed the seed. Amen? That's why we're seeing what we see now. And there's the first thing for you to lock into your mind and to begin to take away from the passage of Scripture that we read tonight. If you want to see growth, somebody has to sow the seed. Amen? Very profound thought. Dreaming about growth will not bring growth. Amen? Wanting and desiring growth, thinking that growth is a great thing and we really must have it, it will not bring growth. Complaining that there isn't any growth will not bring growth. Amen? Agreeing together that growth is a great thing won't bring growth. Having a spring series will not bring growth on its own. Amen? Talking about it, planning for it, setting up events and activities, none of this will work. None of these things will bring growth. It's very simple and very profound. If you want growth then you have to do something. Amen? Someone 
has to plant the seed. If you want to see growth in whatever area of life it is that you're considering tonight, whether it be in your family, whether it be in your marriage, whether it be in your business life, whether it be in your educational status, whether it be in the church, the ministry, the kingdom of God, whatever realm it is you're thinking about, if you want to see growth there, you have to step out into the midst of that which is your field and you have to sow seed in that place where you want to see the growth happen. Someone has to do this. Otherwise, there won't be any growth. Our text is very simple, but it starts off with two words. It says, I planted. Then it says, Apollos watered, and God brought the increase. But it starts with, I planted. It all begins when someone has the vision to realize that they need to sow some seed. Amen. So tonight, if you forget anything else, begin to lock that into your mind and into your heart and begin to consider this possibility. Do you want to see fruitfulness and growth in your marriage? Would you like to see that in your family, in your home? Would you like to see growth and change in your personal character, in the depth of your personal walk with God? Would you like to see change in your emotional state, in your prayer life, in your scripture reading? in the ministry that you're a part of? Would you like to see growth in this church? Amen? Well, we have opportunity to make that happen. And you say you want to see growth there, but I would ask you, what seed are you planting? Amen? Because if you want to see growth, you've got to plant some seed. So what are we doing about this challenge that we have? We won't see any growth if we don't sow the seeds that will make it possible for God to make that happen. Amen. Now, sowing seed is an intentional thing. We all know the parable of the sower. We all know that. We've studied it. We've heard it preached on. We've had series preached about the parable of the sower. But it's very very interesting. It starts out, the first words that Jesus say right at the beginning of that parable are, a sower went out to sow. He went out to sow. That was his purpose. That was his reason for going out. He wanted growth. He wanted a crop. He wanted a return. He wanted to know that his family were going to be fed and he'd have something to sell so that he can increase his status in life and in the village or whatever it would be. So he set out specifically to do the work and to make the interaction that was needed to bring that to pass. Amen. A sower went out to sow. And we're having a spring series about growth here. But I would say to you and I, and I'd ask myself the same question, do we really want growth? Do we want growth enough to make up our minds that we're going to go out into the middle of the field and do what needs to be done to make that happen? Amen. As we said, wishful thinking is not going to do it. We won't see growth through inaction. Amen. We won't. Going out into your garden and staring at a patch of dirt is not going to produce fruit and flowers. Trust me, it's not. If you stare at it long enough, you may find it overtaken with weeds, but you won't get any fruit unless you interact with it and begin to do something. Good intentions aren't going to bring growth. As we said, agreeing together that we need growth won't bring growth. If we want growth in our church, We're going to have to take advantage of the season God has given us and we're going to have to each personally and individually decide I'm going to make it my mission to sow seed, to see this happen. Growth begins when good seed is sown. That's where it all starts. So let's break it down and look at it a little bit tonight. The church is people, right? Amen? It's not the building in which we we have church. We are the church, you and I, together, we're the church. The church is people. So if the church is going to grow, people have to grow. Amen? Logic. Amen. Follow along with me. So if we want to see people grow, we as God's people need to make our minds up that we're going to plant godly seed into people's lives. Amen? 
We're going to plant good things into people's lives. We're going to invest into people, into their spiritual life, into their well-being. Amen. We're not just going to have church. We're not just going to set up a load of programs and go, hey, our music is wonderful and our preaching is dynamic and our greeters shake your hand at the door with a smile. You know, and just expect people to come in and growth magically to take place. We have to personally decide, I'm going to interact with people and I'm going to make it my mission to deposit godly seed into their life. That they might grow. Amen. So let me ask you, why do you come to church? Why did you come tonight? To be fed? Maybe. To hear the word of God? I hope so. Maybe to participate and exercise the ministry that you're a part of. And all those things are good. But then there are those people who come in with a deliberate intention to sow godly seed. Amen. You can tell. I look around and I see it. Some people come for that reason. And you can see it in their life. Others, maybe they don't. Not because they're bad people, but just because they haven't grasped this principle yet. But I don't know about you. I don't want to blow my own trumpet. But personally, I've never been content just to show up. Amen? Am I in company tonight? If all I do is show up, I'm a waste of space. When I come here, I want to do something for somebody. I want to impart something to the service, to the, to the ministry, to the people, to you, amen? And, and even to me. I want my, my coming here to have a purpose and to achieve something. And that's the attitude that I've always had when I come to church. God, I've come to serve you. And if I leave here without doing anything, without having blessed anybody, and without having sung a song, without having prayed, without doing a single thing, Lord God, to further your kingdom, then I'm wasting my time. I want to deposit something in somebody. That's something that has the God-given potential to bring blessing and growth, amen, in their life. And I hope you do too, amen, because that's, that's the attitude that's going to bring growth. So I'd like to challenge you and maybe provoke you tonight a little bit. Think about starting to come to church with a sower's mindset. Instead of coming in burdened down by all your own needs, come in looking for opportunities to sow some godly deposit into everyone that you meet. To put a little encouragement in someone's life here. To put a little blessing in someone's life there. Amen? As the Bible says in Hebrews 3.13, we should look for ways to provoke one another to love and good works. Amen? Sorry, that was Hebrews 10.24. Hebrews 3.13 says we should encourage one another daily. Amen? Both of those are examples of sowing that godly seed. Even if it's just a word, even if it's just a smile of encouragement, amen, don't ever leave without having sowed something in someone's life. And if we all do that, you'll see the growth take place. Amen? Look for opportunities to lift others up and help them to grow. Amen? Add on to that list, encourage your pastor. Amen? We all come week after week expecting him to sow life into us. I'll tell you from experience, that's an awful lot easier if people in turn are sowing life back into you. So let's treat the man well, amen? All right, that was a free shot, amen, okay. (laughs) Whenever you do something in church, whenever you come to church, whenever you participate in a ministry, try to leave something behind you that raises the spiritual temperature. That leaves others encouraged and inspired, amen? And wanting to move forward and press into the things of God. You know what? We all leave something behind us every time we come. My prayer is it will be stepping stones and not stumbling blocks, amen? Think about it. What am I leaving behind me? What am I doing, amen? Am I contributing? Am I bringing life? Am I bringing growth in this Or am I being a hindrance? Amen. Because sometimes, let's face it, you and I can do that. Amen. And brethren, these things ought not so to be. Amen. I like the people who come in with a sower's mindset. Amen. I could point them out. Amen. There are people here tonight. Amen. And I look at it and I go, oh, there's a sower. Always giving. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. Always dropping in some word of encouragement. Amen. When you meet them, they shake your hand, they smile, and you know it's genuine. You know they're excited for God. And when you're having a bit of a difficult day, you think, oh, praise God for that encouragement. Amen. You just sowed into my life. So be a sower. If you want growth, you're going to have to sow seed. 
Make up your mind to sow seed. If you need growth in your home, in your marriage, amen, sow godly seed there into that relationship. Sow godly seed into your children, wherever it may be, amen, this is the key to seeing it happen. Secondly tonight, we need to make sure that we don't just sow any old thing. We need to sow spiritual seed, amen? Let's back up a little bit. What is a seed? Okay, there are various descriptions of what a seed is, but I've written one here that kind of breaks down what we need to think about tonight. And it goes like this. It says a seed is a thing that has the life of God wrapped up inside of it. And when it's planted, that life can come out and it can grow into something beneficial and productive. Amen? A seed is a miracle. It's a little dried up, wizened looking thing. You look at it and you think, that's nothing. But you put that seed into the ground and give it the right conditions and some kind of genetic miracle takes place in there. That little seed has got the life of God literally inside of it. And it can burst out and it can become a tree. It can become a plant that gives you food or flowers. It's an awesome, awesome thing. And with all man's ingenuity and all the technology that we have, we still don't fully understand. In fact, we don't even begin to understand how it works. That's because what's inside of it is the life of God. (laughs) Amen. That's what a seed is. Another way of looking at it is, a seed is a little, little thing that makes a big, big difference. Amen. So if you want growth and results, as we've already said, you have to sow seed. But let me, let me put a different inflection on that sentence. If you want growth and results, you have to sow seed. Okay? Not just anything will do. Nobody goes out into their garden and plants rocks. Nobody sticks little pieces of wood in the ground or chunks of scrap metal and expects fruit trees and flowers to grow. We understand that that's nonsense. But so often, in our desire for growth, we end up trying to plant things that are negative and unproductive, and of the flesh and of human intellect, amen? And we try and force growth to take place in our lives and in our relationships, and sometimes even in our ministries, and we complain when we're surrounded by so little fruit, because we're planting the wrong stuff. If you want fruit, you've got to plant godly seed. Why is it that we sink so much of our time and our energy and our focus into things that don't have that life of God within them? Amen? We run around like maniacs trying to make growth happen through our own efforts. Amen? Sometimes we despair about a particular relationship they're involved in and we try and fix the other person by attacking them with logic and criticizing them and trying to put our point of view forward when the Bible gives us a completely different way of handling people. And yet we always think we know better than the Bible. We know better than the Spirit of God. So off we go again, giving them a piece of our mind and tearing things down and trying to impose growth. You know, it's like we try and get hold of the situation by the throat and go, you will grow, and it doesn't grow. (laughs) Amen. We have to go back to God's way of doing it. We have to say, God, what is the godly seed that you want to plant here? Amen. The scripture in Hebrews 6.3, and it tells us there that we should repent of dead works. Amen. And so often, and I've been guilty of this, and I probably still am in some areas, and I repent, Lord, I'll make my own altar call. But we, 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 we try and bring the life of God, we try and cause godly growth through dead works, and it doesn't work. Amen? Sometimes we need to repent. You know what the definition of insanity is? Doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. Amen? How long have we been trying the same old nonsense? Isn't it time to give up that human mindset and the human approach to the relationships that we're a part of? That human outlook towards what needs to take place in the church, amen? We get crossover little things and all these different stuff takes place when we should be focusing on sowing godly seed because that alone has the potential to bring the growth that we desire, amen? Let's focus on the areas that God has anointed that are going to work, amen? 
with me tonight? Another thing about seed is that seed produces seed. It's fruitful. It brings a crop. So that's another way we can look at it. We want to be sowing things into our lives, into our ministry, into other people, in our relationships that are going to bring life in others. Amen? If it brings death in others, don't bother sowing it. If it's only of the flesh, don't bother sowing it. If it doesn't contain the life of God and the spirit of God and the anointing of God and the joy of God and the peace of God and the freedom that God's spirit brings when he's on the loose, don't bother sowing it. Look for those things and sow them. Because when you plant that life in other people, then the seed's going to grow in them into more seed and they're going to be able to plant that same life into others also. And isn't that what we want to see? Amen. So we've got to sow godly seed if we want to see growth. Let me close this section out with a few penetrating questions. What things are you wasting your time and effort on that contain no life? Amen. What habits might you have fallen into where, as we said, you go round and round the same old loop again, repeating the same old old fruitful approaches and behaviors, and yet at the same time despairing that you're not seeing the growth you desire? Maybe something right there is beginning to speak to you tonight and saying, maybe you're sowing the wrong stuff. Is it time to make a change and start sowing something different, something more appropriate? Maybe it's time you stopped poking at the ground with a stick and started putting some godly seed in there that it might grow. Third thing about sowing seed, and this is a universal reality, is that you sow now and you reap later. Amen. Sowing seed is a faith exercise. Always. If you're going to sow seed, you have to be thinking about the future. Too many think just about the now. They think about the work that's involved. They think about the cost. They think about the fact that they might have to bite their lip and not speak the words that they so desperately want to speak right now. They think about the way that they feel. And they think about all these different things. And they focus in on the now and what's involved in sowing this godly seed in the now. And because they don't like the way that feels and they don't like what it's going to cost, they don't sow. Amen. After you've sown a seed, what do you have to show for it? You have a seed in a pot of wet dirt and dirty hands. Not an awful lot of return for all of your time and effort. Amen. I've got one here. It's impressive, huh? Look at that. Aren't you really impressed? For those of you that listen on the podcast, what I'm holding up here is basically a pot of wet dirt with a label in it. But this label says courgette. There's a courgette seed in there. You can't see much right now. doesn't look like much. But let me tell you, it's growing. And when it grows, I'm going to have me some veggies. But right now, it doesn't look like anything. You can look at that and you can go, what was the point of me doing that? What was the point of me forgiving that person? What was the point of me biting my lip? What was the point of me showing restraint and having wisdom for that situation when I'd much rather have just bitten off their head and have done with it? Amen? What's the point of me struggling? Amen? To carry the cross and to do it God's way, not my way, when all I've got to see is a pot of wet dirt? Amen? But the truth is, if you don't sow now, you're not going to have any veggies in the future. You've got to sow if you want growth. I'm going to put that down again before I drop it. I wrote this. I don't like it, but it's true. It says, growth costs. You have to pay the bill up front. Amen? Amen? Don't shoot the messenger, but it's the truth. The Christian life is full of this. The Word of God is full of it. Examples abound. Let's just break out three. As we've already said, we have to sow seeds into our relationships. 
Many ways in which we can do this. Touched on some already. Forgiving somebody who's wronged you. That's sowing a godly seed in a relationship right there. Giving a patient and respectful answer to that person who just seems to be going out of their way to get right up your nose. Man, that's a godly seed. Forbearing one another, as the Bible says, loving one another, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Amen? All these are sowing seeds for growth. Overlooking somebody's fault. Not doing these, none of these are personal rewarding in the short term. They all cost us when we do this. They're hard to do. But every time we do one of these, amen, we're sowing a godly seed into someone else's life. We're sowing a seed of possibility for the future. And as the Spirit of God, amen, hovers over the face of the waters, He can bring that seed to life and He can cause growth, amen, and redeem people as we sow those godly seeds. The growth will come over the long term. In whatever area of life it is, amen, sow seeds into your relationships, godly ones, amen, and you will see the blessing. We have to sow seeds into our ministry and into the church, amen. Whatever you do in the church sets the atmosphere. Amen? An atmosphere is really important. It is. Because the Spirit of God, amen, is, is, is sensing the atmosphere. If there's division amongst us, if there's criticism, if there's hidden sin, if there's things going on in our minds and our thoughts and our hearts and our attitudes to one another that don't line up with the Word of God and don't please the Spirit of God, then the Spirit of God is going to feel hindered and not want to move in our midst. If we're all constantly sowing godly seed where godly seed needs to be sown, watch out because the growth is going to explode. Amen? Important. Our attitude is important. Uh, pastor's asked me to do something again. Oh man, doesn't he know I don't get any time off? He wants me to come down to church again. Uh. Amen. When you're willing and enthusiastic, when you turn up and you labor, not only does the basic stuff get done that we're asking you to do, but other people are encouraged by your zeal. Amen. It makes a difference. When you're engaged and excited, it demonstrates to others that you really expect God to do something. Amen? You're saying, you know what? I believe that God is going to cause this seed to grow. And I'm here, I'm excited about it. It stimulates others to have vision and to have faith. Amen? When you're mature and easygoing, amen, and and solid in your Christian life and and the graces that go with that, people can relax around you and we can work together and cooperate as a team. Amen? We can kick ideas around and and share things with one another that you wouldn't be able to share if people were constantly walking on eggshells and afraid of every word that they might say for fear that it gets taken wrongly. Hello? Shall I go now? (laughs) But it's true, amen? Amen? We've all seen this dynamic play out. And this is why these these things that I'm touching on, the small, small things. But seeds are small things. And if we sow right, we'll see growth. Sow seeds that create an environment in which other people can grow and flourish. Amen. There's loads more here. Amen. But you can find them in the Bible yourself. We also have to sow seed within ourselves. And this is an important one. All of us struggle with things, do we not? Amen? Any perfect people in here? We have negative mindsets from time to time. We struggle with unbelief. We struggle with anger, self-pity, and any one of a number of other things that we really shouldn't be feeling. Amen? If we're redeemed people of God and we have all the resources that the Lord says we have, and yet we do. Amen? We feel this stuff within us and we can either let it be, let it stay there, let it have its way, or we can rise to the challenge and confront it and take it on. And taking them on is hard work. It's never pleasant to do, to wrestle within yourself, striving for holiness. And let's face it, sometimes we just can't be bothered. Amen? But every time we pull ourselves up, 
knock ourselves into line, grab ourselves by the collar and say, no, come on, it's time to repent, it's time to seek God, it's time to try and put the word of God into practice here, it's time, amen, that the spirit defeated the flesh. It's hard to do in the short term, but every time you do that and you fight that battle, you're sowing a godly seed inside of your own heart. Amen? You're sowing seeds that can blossom, amen, into ministry and into fruitfulness and into blessing for other people's lives. But if we never sow the seed, amen, we'll never see the growth. And sometimes the area in which we need the most sowing and we need the most of God's seed in us, it's, it's in us. It's in the personal life, amen? Sow seeds of purity in your thought life, amen? Sow seeds of prayer, even if you find prayer hard, find some way just to pray. Amen? We have prayer meetings before every service. I know sometimes we can't get here because of work and travel and buses and traffic and other nonsense that gets in the way. But many times we can. And whenever you can, I urge and encourage you to come and grab that time. Take that opportunity to sow some seed into your life. We have prayer meetings on Fridays except this week when we're having ministry meeting, amen? Come and join us. Pray yourself, amen? Take some time in your day whenever it works for you and just stop everything. Turn off the phone, amen? Just for 20 minutes, half an hour, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever you can manage and just set yourself apart for God. Sow some seed of prayer and you'll see the fruit grow. Sow into the word of God. Let God's word, that seed of life, fall into your heart. It'll never bring the growth you desire to have if you don't expose your heart to the seed of God's word. Amen? Yeah, I know we hear it all the time. Yeah, I know it's, a, it's like, you know, it's old news. Read your Bible, pray, come to church. But these things are the seeds that we need to sow. Amen? If we really want to see the growth that we say we want to see, we've got to do the spiritual spade work. Amen? If you put in the work now, you'll reap a blessing to come in the future. Final thoughts as we close this out. Three things that struck me that I just thought I'd throw out here over the pulpit. I've seen so many people over the years whose spiritual ground is just dry and lifeless and barren. They struggle with everything. When you look at their life, there's just a little twig here and a little twig there and a bit of dead leaf. And spiritually, they live constantly on the breadline. And they never seem to improve, they never seem to change. And you look and you wonder, and you see them complain, and you hear them belly aching and saying, you know what, serving God is so hard, and it doesn't really work, and I don't know if I'm going to carry on coming to church or not. But when you begin to analyze it and check their life, you'll find one thing. Usually, they didn't sow any spiritual seed. Amen? You begin to look and you'll see in all these different areas, a lack in here, a lack there, a lack there. They're not making the decisions they need to make. They're not allowing God's word to challenge their heart. They're not putting the principles of scripture into practice. They talk the talk, but they're not walking the walk, making the decisions and paying the price that needs to be paid. Amen? If that's you, I don't mean to cap on you. I don't mean to have a go at you tonight. I just want to, in love, amen, and through Scripture, explain to you exactly what your problem is. The reason that you're in that place tonight is that so often you've deceived yourself and allowed other things to deceive you into the fact that just coming to church, saying the right things, making the right noises, amen, and hanging around with the right people is somehow going to bring spiritual growth in your life. It won't. You've got to sow those seeds. But it's not too late, amen? It's never too late. Spring is a season of opportunity, amen? And you're hearing this tonight because there's opportunity. Because God can redeem you from your dead and fallow ground. If you'll just take this word to heart tonight and begin to sow the seeds that you've neglected to sow in the past, God will bring a harvest in your life, amen? That's number one. Number two is addressed to those people who've been around a while, like me. Amen. Maybe your life is filled with flourishing crops right now. You have the blessing of God, there's fruitfulness, there's growth, you're enjoying the fat of the land. Well, let me tell you something, don't stop sowing now. Amen. 
Because what you sow today is going to bring fruit in the future. And if you stop sowing now, at best, all you're going to have is what you have now. And at worst, in the future, you're going to find out when you've eaten and lived off all the blessings you've got now, you have nothing else and you're spiritually barren. Those of us who come to a place of blessing, we need to sow even more. Amen? Because God has even more. So are you happy with the crops that you've got in your life now? Are you happy? Are you content in that place? I hope not. Amen. Because God has so much more for every single one of us. And we need to just redouble our efforts and say, you know what? This is fantastic. If this is what happens from the seed that I've sown in my life, look out world, I'm going to sow twice as much and I'm going to get seriously blessed. Amen. You may be getting on a little bit in years. Welcome in a comfy chair. Amen. I can relate. Praise God. But don't stop sowing godly seed. Amen. Because God has awesome things up ahead for us. But we need to keep sowing. Amen. And thirdly, just a quick thought here. Think again back to the parable of the sower. The story there, the Bible says that he kept on sowing. Did he not? He didn't look at the ground. Some fell on thorny ground. Some fell on stony ground. Some fell at the side of the thing and the birds headed up. But he didn't care about the ground. He wasn't phased by what was taking place in the ground. He wasn't bothered by the birds and all the other stuff that was going on. The, the sun withering down and all these different things that Jesus talks about. The sower went out to sow. He sowed and he kept on sowing. And he trusted God that some of that seed would fall into good places and he would get an increase. And guess what? The Bible says he did 100 fold. Mm, that's a return. So sow your seed and be consistent about it. Amen? Sow. And sow tomorrow. And sow next week. And keep on sowing. And sow in faith. Because as you sow, Jesus said, you will reap. Amen? Ecclesiastes 11.6. It says, In the morning sow your seed. And in the evening do not withhold your hand. Because you don't know which of it is going to grow. Maybe this one. Maybe that one. Or maybe both alike will come good. So brothers and sisters, our responsibility, if we want to see growth in this spring season, is to sow seed. Sow godly seed. Sow it into your own life that God may bring growth and life in you, that that life may blossom out and bless others. Sow seed into your family. Sow seed into your marriage. Sow seed into your relationships. Sow it in ministry. Make sure that you sow it in church. Wherever you go, in whatever situation you find yourself, say, God, give me some godly seed that I can plant in somebody's heart. Amen. And then get out of the way. Amen. And see God bring the increase. Hallelujah. That's all we have tonight. Amen. Bow your heads with me and let's pray as we close this evening. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you tonight, Lord God. If you've been blessed or challenged by today's preaching and you'd like to get in touch with us, the easiest way is via our website at www.newharvestuk.com. You can email us at info at newharvestuk.com or look us up on Facebook or Twitter. You can call us on 0161 278 6305 or you can even write to us at 194 Chapel Street, Salford, Manchester, m 3 6 by We'd also like to extend a warm welcome for you to join us at any of our services. However you might be feeling, and whatever you might have been told, know this. God loves you, and there's a place for you in his kingdom. God bless you, we're praying for you, and once again, thank you for listening.